welcome back. In this lecture, I will talk about linear step polymerization and continue the discussion on molecular weight control and talk about molecular weight distribution and polymerization kinetics of step linear step polymerization. Now, in last lecture, we discussed how we can control the molecular weight with conversion or how degree of polymerization is related to conversion and we started with a simple system where either we have taken a AB type monomer where the molar ratio of two functional groups are always 1 is to 1 or we have taken two, func two monomers where AA type or BB type and we have taken this in equimolar mixture. Now, in that case we have found that degree of polymerization is related to the conversion by this e equation and we call the that equation as Carothas equation. Now, we also said that uh, controlling polymer molecular weight by this uh, controlling conversion is not recommended because at the end of polymerization we if, if we do not control in other way then we are always left with the functional group present at the end of polymer chain which can further react with themselves. So, that during processing we might get a instability in molecular weights. Next we discussed how we can control the molecular weight by controlling the stoichiometry of the functional group and we have taken A and BB type monomer and we have shown that degree of polymerization is related to conversion and R which is the ratio of the functional groups. So, that it is always less than equals to 1. R is given by Na by Nb if Nb is greater than the amount of Nb a number of functional group of B is greater than Na. So, Na is number of functional group A and Nb is the number of functional group of B. Now, if N A is having higher number than N B then R we should define as N B by N A. And in this case if we can manage to push the reaction till completion or towards P equals to 1 then this expression will become 1 plus R divided by 1 minus R or if R is 1 we get the Carothas equation which we talked in last lecture last slide. Now, there is another way we can control the molecular weight we discussed that by addition of chain stopper and we have discussed that this is the expression where we have considered two monomers in equal ratio a b type monomer or equal mixture of a and b b type monomer. But in that case r is defined little differently where n a by n b plus 2 n b prime where n b prime n n b prime is the number of b monomer b molecules present which are monofunctional. This two is 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 basically due to the fact that one single monofunctional monomer actually do similar effect like excess of one difunctional monomer. So, if we see this graph how you know how to control the molecular by stoichiometric uh, control we can see this uh, graph where this is this is the excess of one of the monomers say for example, in this case B B. So, the R value correspond to this would be 100 by 101, so, this would be 100 by 102, 100 by 103, this should be 100 by 104 and this is excess is 0 that means R is 1 in this case in this point. Now, if you 
we are plotting x n degree of polymerization in y axis and let me write these numbers. And these are for different value of p. So, this is p equals to 1, this is p equals to 0.995, p equals to 0 0.990, p equals to 98, and this is p equals to 97. So, basically, this is the direction where we are increasing p. So, from this you can see that degree of polymerization dependent on both ratio and the conversion. Now, if you want to achieve high molecular weight or high degree of polymerization maybe in this region, then you need to do reactions such a way that P should be very high and R should be as close to 1 as possible. If you are far away from if you if you are basically imbalance increases or R is away from 1 or P is less then you are bound to get lower and lower value of degree of polymerization. Let us give an example we talk about say uh, polyamide from the reaction of adipic acid and hexamethylene diamine and we have three scenario in this case. First is molar ratio is 1 is to 1 and P is 0 0.995. Second scenario where we have one of the monomers say adipic acid present in one person excess and having same P 0 0.995. And third case where we have same thing molar ratio 1 is to 1 and P is equal to 0.995, but we have added benzoic acid which is, a, which is a monofunctional molecule which has present as 1 person extra, 1 person excess with respect to the monomers like adipic acid. Now, so first case P is 1 is uh, P is 995 and molar ratio is 1 1 is to 1. So, we apply this formula Carothers equation to get x n is equal to 200. In second case P is 0 0.95 and R is 1 person excess monomer. So, 100 by 101. So, we put this number here and we get x n is 100.5 and in third case P is again 995 R is 100 by 100 plus 2 into that 1 person excess which we have, which will turn out to be x, x n value of x n is 67.3. Now, you can see that just adding 1 person monofunctional reactants which are basically chain stoppers, they have it has more effect than adding 1 person excess of one of the monomers. So, that is why it is very important that your reaction mixture should be devoid of any monofunctional monomers present in the system. And if you want to reduce or if you want to control the molecular weight, you can always use uh, this uh, monofunctional monomer as a chain stopper to reduce the molecular weight. Just to uh, how just to uh, uh, say how you get the molecular weight just we, we have seen that m n is x n multiplied by 130 repeat unit for this polymer is uh, 226. So, uh, so x the molecular m n would be x n multiplied by 113. Next we will go to uh, statistical theory of uh, molecular weight distribution in linear polymerization and we will talk about um, size distribution and we will again consider the simplest situation where we have a b type monomer or equal ratio of a and b b and this distribution is provided by uh, most probable distribution is provided by um, p j flory. Now, 
I am not deriving this expression, this is the final expression where n x is the number of molecules of degree of polymerization of a particular value at conversion p, where a n is the total number of molecules present at conversion p. So, n x is the number of molecules of degree of polymerization value of x. So, basically this is equivalent to x mar. So, n x is the number of molecules of x mar. Similarly, with n naught, then we get this expression where n naught is the initial number of molecule and n is the total number of molecule present at that particular conversion p. And w is the weight fraction of the x mar and this of the and x is the, the value of x mar. So, if you are talking about dimer then x is 2, if you are talking about octamer x is 8 and so on. So, this expression can be used to calculate in a reaction mixture what is the uh, you know, mole fraction of a particular mar or weight fraction of a particular mar. For example, we can calculate this uh, monomer percentage for an equilibrium uh, step growth polymerization 99 percent uh, what is the fraction of um, by mole percent and weight percent. So, this is the formula we should apply for uh, mole fraction mole fraction and so mole fraction would be your mole fraction in i or in x this is the mole fraction of x mar which is given by n x by n. So, 1 minus p p to the power x is 1. So, 1 is to 1. So, basically p is here 99 percent. So, 1 minus 0 0.99 this is 1. So, is equal to 0 0.01. So, basically the mole fraction of in this case we are talking about monomer x is equal to 1, we are talking about monomer. So, x is equal to 1. So, monomer mole fraction is 0 0.01 or 1 percent, which means even after 99 percent conversion, we still have 1 percent of the molecules present as monomers. Whereas, if you want to get the value for weight fraction, we should apply this expression and in this case, in this case x is 1. So, 1 minus 0 0.99 square p 1 minus 1 which will turn out to be 0 0.01 0 0.0001. So, the weight fraction of the monomer is much lower which is basically 0 0.01 percentage which means by weight in the reaction mixture the monomer has about 0 0.01 percent in the reaction mixture. So, by number when you when you find a distribution as we probably seen again we will see now that the, the lower molecular weights or lower mass are present more in number than in weight. So, this is the mole fraction of uh, so, this is the mole fraction of x mar. So, this is the x mar. So, 50 means 50 degree of polymerization and these are for different uh, p value. So, this is p is equal to 0 0.095 and this one is for 9.8 and this is for 9.9. So, as you can see that with when you have lower conversion or lower amount of reaction then percentage of 
low molecular weight in terms of number percentage is much higher as reaction goes uh, towards completion or more and more reaction happen. The monomer percentage or the low molecular percentage goes uh, down, but still even at 99 per percent conversion you can see that the percentage of lower mars have much uh, higher in number. So, in, in case of number that if you have a lower mar will be always it will present always in higher number than a mar with higher x value. So, which means in any condition I will have more number of tetramer present in a reaction mixture compared to say pentamer and that will that will always happen obviously the difference will come down as we increase the p value or we proceed towards more completion towards the reaction now this uh, will be little different when we talk about weight fraction of this x mark in that case this is uh, p is equal to 0 0.9 this is p is equal to 0.95 this is p is equal to 0.98 and this is p is equal to 0.99 so in this case as you can see is always the mars which have intermediate value they have the highest weight fraction and this goes towards more this peak where the weight fraction is having the highest weight fraction the mar, mars which will ha, which are having highest weight fraction this shifted towards right or higher x value as we increase the conversion or at, as we go towards completion of the polymerization reaction. So, there is little difference as you can understand that there is little difference between number fraction distribution as well as weight fraction distribution in a step growth polymerization. So, we when you take a, this is for simple 1 is to 1 molar ratio. So, we have x n given by this value and x w which is the weight average degree of polymerization is given by this value. So, the dispersity value or polydispersity index always given by 1 plus p. Now, so this is the uh, derived dispersity value for a step growth polymers. Now, for a you can understand that for a high molecular weight step polymer p value would be close to 1. So, the dispersity value should be always close to 2. Now, in practice actually we get little above 2 and that happens because of two reason. One when you isolate this polymers say by precipitation mechanism or some other make, um, method, then some of these low molecular weights are stripped off from the polymer mixture as a result uh, the x w goes up and also x w goes up comparatively higher than x n and also there is always a probability is probability of for forming cyclic molecule and once this cyclic mo molecule forms then this dispersity goes little above 2. So, like 2.2, 2.3 and so on, but we can avoid we cannot avoid completely the cyclic formation, but we can minimize by carrying out the reaction at higher monomer concentration and so on which we I am not discussing in this uh, lecture this introductory course, but there are ways to minimize the formation of cyclic. So, what from this slide what you should remember that 
this is the number distribution what it looks like and this is the weight distribution weight fraction distribution how does it look like and for a step polymer for a high molecular weight step polymer the dispersity value is always near 2, but in practice we get little above 2. We will now next move to the next topic of kinetics of step polymers. Now, we will go back and just look at the mechanism once again how the um, step growth polymers are formed. There are many reactions possible in uh, in a reaction mixture and uh, what we need to if we need to calculate the rate expression for each individual reaction that is it is a, it's a almost impossible to do the uh, reaction kinetics for the polymerization reaction. So, for this there are few assumptions. Assumption assumptions are that reactivity of both functional groups of a bifunctional monomer are same. So, if I talking about a A B type monomer A B type monomer then the reactivities of A, a functional group and B functional groups are same. And next the reactivity of one functional group of a bifunctional reactant is same irrespective of whether the other functional group has reacted or not. Which means that if this B has reacted it does or it does not it has not reacted the reactivity of A does not change. And the third is that the reactivity of a functional group is independent of the size of the molecules to which this is attached which means that if I have a dimer or a trimer or I have a tetramer or even hexamer or pentamer the molecule the functional group which is at the end say like if you took about the polyesterification the acid group at the end of either of these mars have same reactivity irrespective of the size of the molecule to which it is attached which means effectively the reaction kinetics of each of these reactions are same and we basically call this principle as equal reactivity of functional groups. And this is not just assumption, these assumption are established experimentally. So, which means these are a fair assumption. So, it is not that we are assuming something to make our life easy, but this is experimentally proven that these are indeed the case. So, if we assume all these things then we can just write this as a general reaction of N mar plus M mar gives giving N plus M mar. So, we can just write the reaction like N mar plus M mar N plus M mar and if we talk about the reaction between functional group A and B. Now, most cases the step polymerization are performed in presence of catalyst. So, we write catalyst and we get this reaction, this is general reaction plus catalyst. Now, in this particular case we are assuming three things or we are considering three things that the low molecular weight condensate like say polyesterification water or some HCl or whatever is coming out during this reaction we are removing completely. So, basically this reaction is a irreversible reaction. So, we are only putting the forward direction. So, we are talking about irreversible polymerization and A B monomer type and in the simplest case where A B A we are talking about only A B monomer type or equimolar uh, mixture of A B and B B B. So, we can we know the rate of um, polymerization or rate of reaction is uh, the rate of disappearance of a functional group. So, in this case because we can consider either A or B both are same. 
So, we can write uh, rate constant concentration of A and concentration B are concentration of catalyst and catalyst concentration is constant. So, we put this within this new con new rate constant giving A plus B. Now, we know that the equimolar stoichiometry we have considered here. So, concentration of A and B we consider as a C. So, we write the rate expression like this and we do this integration uh, where C0 is the initial uh, at t is equal to 0 C is C0. So, initial monomer concentration. So, we just the, do some uh, all, uh, rearrangement where P is the frac uh, basically um, conversion the fraction of functional groups which reacted at time t. So, we get this expression. So, eventually we get x in degree of polymerization is given by 1 plus C naught k t where C naught is the initial monomer concentration. So, this is uh, experimentally verified where we this is uh, x n or which is equals to 1 by 1 minus p that what we got and this is time in minute and this is verified uh, for a reaction between adipic acid plus ethylene glycol. catalyst by PTSA panatolinic sulfonic acid at a temperature of 109 degree centigrade. So, whatever we have derived from that rate equation is experimentally verified I have given you one example in this particular case. Now, in there could be another possibility where we are not adding any any uh, we are not adding any external catalyst oh, okay, there is this is example uh, we, we just wanted to show you and uh, so basically this shows we need to show that the time required to time required to go from p 0 0.98 to 0 0.99 is very close to the time to reach from 0 0.98 start of the polymerization. So, if we quickly uh, try to show this that we, we know this expression C naught uh, k t is equal to 1 by 1 minus p minus 1. So, t is given by p k C 0 1 minus p. Now, when P is 0.98, we write T at 0 0.98, 0 0.98 divided by K C 0 1 minus 0 0.98, 98 98 which gives us 49 by k c 0. Similarly, we can find out for p 99 which will give us t of 99 by k c 0. So, the time required to go from 0 conversion to 98 conversion is given by this value and the time from 0 0.98 to 0.99 is given by difference between this number and this number which is 50 by k c 0. So, this is the time for this and this is the time for 0 to t 0 0.98 which means for completing the reaction up to 98 percent is almost took us same time from going from 98 percent conversion to 99 percent conversion and that happens because when we are have converted 99 percent that means 99 percent functional groups has reacted. Now, the effective concentration of functional groups are very low 
that is the reason why the reaction rate which is reaction is a bimolecular reaction is a is a reaction between two functional group because the functional groups concentration has reduced drastically that is why the reaction rate comes down. So, which means basically for a step polymerization we can achieve the some value of conversion very fast, but to get a very high value of conversion we need to run our reaction for a much longer time because that it is very difficult to build uh, or achieve the high conversion at later part. So, with this I will stop uh, for this lecture and next lecture I will start with another possibility of uh, step polymerization which is uh, not very practically uh, uh, done. This is externally catalyzed polymerization is the most frequently done step polymerization, but I for a completion of uh, record I will start with another uh, possibility of uh, um, step polymerization kinetics of step polymerization where we will not add any uh, catalyst from outside one of the reactants can actually um, be used for a, a catalyst. So, that we will start in next lecture.